fellow freediving family. We are locked down here in Australia, but it has actually not been bad at all. We've been doing so many projects and, and gardening things and landscaping things on the farm, and also just taking the time to fall in love with our latest little gremlin. Meet Ari. But because we can't go anywhere, I'm gonna make some freediving tutorials until we can. <laughs> so this is the start of our lockdown series. For the past year, I've been running four weekly remote training sessions for my patrons on Patreon. Plug, 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 if you're keen to check it out, link in the description down below. And at the moment, with that group, we're working on two main things. The first is building a proper freediving foundation, so really establishing a proper base to have limitless growth in freediving. And the second is different mental approaches to freediving. So it gave me the idea to ask a bunch of the world's best freedivers about these topics. So I asked them, what is it that you wish you knew when you first started freediving? And what mental strategy has worked best for you in your freediving career? Also, credit where credit is due. I totally ripped off the idea of this video from Daniel Mann. Uh, go check out his, uh, his YouTube channel. It's absolutely great. He's great. And I'll put the link down below as well. Now make sure you give this video a like or I will drown you. And make sure you subscribe if you plan to stay undrowned. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. What I would like to know at the beginning, uh, I think the uh, best uh, I would prefer to know is how to train properly, how to train smart, because sometimes you lose a lot of time to understand what's the best way to train for freediving, especially for deep freediving, you don't know if it's better only flexibility or uh, strength or uh, specifically. So after years and years, you know exactly what is the best way to, to train for adaptation and to be stronger physically. It would be nice if I knew that one does not need to be hungry in order to perform well. It's uh, actually quite the opposite, often. And uh, the other thing would be that uh, after you go through fundamentals and technique, the main separator in between successful and unsuccessful divers is the level of relaxation you can achieve during the dive. That's fancy. <laughs> Sounds so stupid, doesn't it? It's so simple and so complicated and nebulous. Um, I was always a hands-free equalizer and I just wish somebody had told me to learn to frenzel because I've been doing it for quite a long time now and I still feel like I'm playing catch-up because I'm only just learning it. This is maybe relevant to all you people in lockdown um, is use your time wisely because a lot can be solved through dry training and, um, and you sort of moan about not having the time and the space to get into the water but actually you can do an awful lot dry, so use the time wisely. So one of the many things I wish I'd known when I first started freediving is the importance of being inwardly focused instead of externally focused. What I mean by this is if you're snorkeling, taking pictures, bear fishing, you're focused on what's happening around you externally. Whereas in a deep free dive, we have to shut that down and just focus internally on what's happening in your body and your mind. And that uses less of your resources as well because you can just shut yourself off to only those internal stimuli and hold your breath for a lot longer. This meant that when I first started, I was diving with a mask, of course, and aware of what was happening around me. And actually I was carrying this big hunky um, scuba gauge down and looking at that every five meters to check the depth. Um, but as I got more experienced, I realized that you can't look at the depth and you can't look around yourself that much or be absorbing the experience. That's fine for um, recreational diving, snorkeling, um, but for a deep free dive, you have to close your eyes if you can and just focus on what's happening in your body and your mind. When I started free diving, I wish I knew that if you want to be good at something, you have to make it a priority. And if something makes you happy, maybe you should make it a priority. The thing I think would have been most useful to know when I first started free diving and training properly uh, would have been the importance of pool training to really get familiar with the different feelings that you go through on a breath hold, get familiar with it and learn the, the tools that you, that you need to deal with those, that transition of feelings and also um, as a place where you can actually really push yourself 
uh, up to your limits in a very safe way and um, stimulate your body to uh, like change and get better. Um, I didn't really understand how important the pool was for that and uh, for, for certain, in my competitive diving, it was a game changer. As soon as I started doing proper pool training with a coach, I knew how to push me um, and uh, you know, improve over the periodic training. That was, yeah, that was the game changer. That's where I really saw my performances uh, leap forwards. So, yeah, pool training. The first thing that uh, I wish to know when I started diving was how to equalize, because I want so much to, to know how to go under the water and uh, to discover what was under the rocks. So the first thing was how to equalize my ears. I am not sure there is something I would have liked to know before in freediving, but for sure I would have liked to discover freediving earlier in my life. Now I feel I was very lucky to have the right people and I don't regret anything about my freediving process so far. Given I started freediving and spearing fish when I was like 12 years old in Southern California, back then there wasn't uh, freediving instructors readily available, but uh, I wish I took a course much earlier on in my career as uh, I felt like I wasted a lot of time you know, trying to figure out things when, uh, you know, taking a simple course resolved a lot of uh, the things that I was wanting to learn. So, um, yeah, get on it. If you're interested in freediving, the best way to start is take a course, uh, take a freediving course. What do I wish I knew when I first started freediving? Um, probably how to ease into uh, training properly. Um, so when I first started, I guess I was uh, trying to do tables and, um, ta and, and just general training that I wasn't ready for, both mentally and physically. And so if I knew how to kind of ease into that, um, like I do now, I think that I probably would have progressed a lot faster. Uh, so, you know, sometimes going into training a little bit too fast is... Um, actually counterproductive. So when I started freediving, the one thing that would be most useful for me to know was how to make a good tactics of the dive and how to arrange my thoughts in the last phase of the dive. Uh, I've never had this experience in sport before and if only someone could take like a half an hour to explain it to me so I can work on it, it would make me a much more successful freediver. I think I've lost three or four records verifications because of this. I had blackouts, uh, surface blackouts. And yeah, this would be an extremely helpful information for me. That being said, having a proper coach to tell me that, maybe polish some other things, would be crucial. But this little detail, like tactics and how to arrange my thoughts in the last phase of the dive, how to approach this phase, that would make a really big difference for me. I started, uh, I was a child, kind of uh, very young, I was uh, four or five years old, playing in the sea. And then when I was, uh, I think around eight years old, some, a friend of my father, because my father uh, didn't know anything about freediving, a friend of my father teach me how to equalize. And with just this, I went on exploring and uh, I really believe that uh, I like it very much because uh, all this uh, exploration about the sea and myself makes me feeling more the things, not be too mental, but being more in trying to learn directly from myself and the sea. So I liked the process. Then, of course, with more uh, knowledge from the beginning, everything is uh, faster, but sometimes going slow is, is nice. So when I first started freediving, I wish somebody had shown me the right way to train, basically to avoid um, overtraining. Uh, I would typically spend hours a day doing all sorts of stuff from gym training to underwater rugby, monofin swimming, breath hold diving, obviously. So basically to train more wisely. I wish I would know my freediving would get me here when I started to freedive 13 years ago. <laughs> Hello from Deep Dive Dubai. One of the mental strategies that works best for me 
is staying in the present moment as much as possible. So not thinking about how deep I want to dive or how long I want to hold my breath, but just think about what I am feeling right at this moment. Not how I'll be feeling in 10 seconds time or in a minute, but how am I feeling right now? And what do I have to do right now if I want to have the best dive possible? easiest mental strategy that you can incorporate would probably be that you worry about things that you can control and you completely disregard things that you cannot. Uh, the mental strategy that I use to go into competitions is I try not to care too much about my dives. Um, if I'm going for a, a record dive or something similar, or it's a big dive in a competition, I know that there's always the possibility of failure, you know, uh, you're getting stuck or something like that. So I try not to emphasize the dive or put too much pressure on one single dive. Instead, I like to have a long-term outlook where, you know, I'm going to do my best in this dive, but there will always be another dive to make. So uh, it's not going to, you know, this one dive is not going to make or break my life. So, uh, you know, this has helped me to really decrease the amount of pressure that I feel going into uh, my deep dives. And it's helped me to relax and actually achieve some of the dives that I've done just because I, I don't care so much for them. They're just another day out there training. The more it feels like training, the more comfortable I become and the easier dives seem to be. The mental strategy that uh, I'm using when I'm diving uh, in depth is just uh, don't think. Don't think about anything but just uh, be so focused about my technique and uh, what I have to do under the water. So to equalize my ears and to be just focused 100% of what I'm doing and don't think about anything else. The mental strategy that helped me most was uh, developing uh, a mental program. So a sequence of thoughts and actions and things that I would do in the um, minutes immediately before every performance. And uh, programming that into, into my mind on training dives and on every uh, deep dive I do and, it, and try not to change it too much so that it became a real trigger that I associated with good performances. So you a sequence of thoughts and actions prior to a dive and it results in a good performance every time. And then when you therefore click into that program before the start of the dive, you know you're gonna have a good performance because it always results in a good performance. That's the, that was the, the approach that uh, I adopted that yielded the best results for becoming strong in competition diving. What helped me the most is when I started really being in the moment and deconcentrating. That really changed a lot for me. And basically just practicing it regularly made a huge difference. It's like a gym for the mind. Just do the best I can in a given circumstances, in a given time. And as soon as I'm sure I did everything that I could, I'm happy with the, with the result. Doesn't matter if it's good or bad, uh, maybe not totally happy all the time, let's be fair, but I can accept it. And if it's not as good as I would expect, I will just uh, make my conclusions, take the lessons and move forward because I know I couldn't do better in this moment. And when it is fair with myself, I'm not lying to myself, then it's completely fine and it works pretty good so far. Best, uh, let's say, mental strategy is uh, visualization, is uh, repetition, uh, most, as, most uh, as much as I train, better for me so I'm more relaxed and I use a lot of uh, uh, when I'm in the water I try to put my head on the water so my ears are on the water so I, I breathe through the snorkel so it's easy for me to be like in this dreamy stage where I can be completely relaxed and I, I listen the sounds 
more more away. So it helps me to to focus, to relax, to feel uh, my uh, to feel weightless, to be uh, completely focused on my dive and to visualize what are all 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 the parts before my dive. As for all the mental strategy um, I've been using so far. Uh, the best mental strategy would be to avoid giving too much importance to the dive itself, to the performance, and basically to make the dive itself your meditation. I like to just zero in on the present moment. Um, I just like to observe, so, so just basic um, meditation really. I like to observe what's going on. Uh, something that um, I also try to do as well, um, if I happen to if my, my brain starts thinking about things that I don't want to think about, um, what I try to do is I try to associate uh, a particular thought with something positive. Um, and so as soon as my brain starts flirting with the, with the, you know, the potential of thinking about something um, undesirable, then automatically my brain goes to um, a happy place. Uh, so I find that that works quite well as well. Starting out at first, I, I used many of the techniques I kind of pulled in from other sports uh, because pretty much at the elite level of competition in all sports it comes down to this mental part. We, we all get ready for the comp, but it's a matter of who will deliver on spot at a specific time frame. So in the beginning it was more like autogenic training, and body scan techniques, relaxation techniques, certain trance inductions and focus points, general types of visualization. With time, this evolved into more freediving specific types of visualization and freediving specific mindfulness before and during the dive and attention to concentration. This is one of my favorite techniques and something that I actually instinctively used before, but now it's become very freediving specific. And before the dive and during the dive, this is what I will mostly rely on. Of course, it's not like a 100% uh, bulletproof thing. And in some circumstances, depending on the context of the dive and before the dive, I will maybe use different techniques, but it's a good thing to have experience from many of them. So you can use the best one on spot. I'm not sure if I have a real, I'm not that strategic with this, but make sure that you're enjoying it and give yourself complete freedom with that. Like you have total freedom not to start. It doesn't matter where you are, even if it's a world championships or a record attempt or something. If you're not enjoying it, don't do it. And think of something nice. Yeah, so you've got to love what you do. Otherwise, there's no point. <laughs> and it's actually trying to feel uh, like when I was a child, feeling free in the sea and don't feel the pressure of a deep dive. So as well in a, in a big competition, just before to do my duck dive, I say to myself, I'm free. I can turn whenever I want and come back to the surface if I don't feel to go. And this freedom, I allowed myself also the freedom, freedom of failing. It makes me free and makes the dive much easier. So one of the mental strategies that's been really important to me, and I guess it's more of a meta strategy or a realization, is the idea that your mental approach has to be fluid. So it has to be constantly evolving and updating itself. And the reason for this is that your mind is this fickle beast that gets bored with things really quickly. Um, you've all seen it happen when you have like a song that grows on you and then it becomes your favorite song and you listen to it a few, half a dozen more times then it's not as good and then after maybe a hundred listenings you don't like it anymore you get bored of it and the same thing happens with your mental techniques visualization uh, positive affirmation might be really useful at first but after a while they start to kind of lose their their glow so you need to update them make modifications or substitute them with different techniques or have enough techniques that you can revolve them around without ever getting bored of one so be aware of this and ensure that you don't just have one strategy that you fall back on because at some point that strategy isn't going to work as well and you'll find yourself kind of floundering a little bit have a lot be constantly on the lookout for more ask other people what strategies they use, adopt those as well, test them out. Um, so have this kind of fluid state for your, your mental training, your mental approach. 
there you have it. Now, every one of these freedivers that you just heard from offers some kind of coaching or training. So if any of their advice really spoke to you, then definitely get in touch with them and organize some training or coaching or a course or whatever. I've put links to their social media or links to their websites down below in the description. I hope you're still able to get out and get diving. And I hope that when I'm allowed to leave my bloody house, I will see you in the water somewhere. Thanks so much for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe by pressing this little circular thing down here. Also, check out this video. Or you might want to check out this video because you might like it too.